name is Susie and today I thought I would share with you how I'm making these outdoor almost waterproof cushions and I'm making a cushion actually for an outdoor bench it's a bench that's going to go on the pontoon if you watch the video on making the bimini or the canopy for the pontoon it's actually a working pontoon and it has four outdoor benches and I'm going to be making four cushions for all the benches. And what I'm using is outdoor fabric, and today I'm using Sunbrella, and I'm using pool noodles. Now, as you may know, the inside of exterior or outdoor patio cushions, the foam is very, very expensive. And this is just a great alternative that's inexpensive. You can keep it out pretty well all the time. It's waterproof because these are pool noodles. And really the only thing that's going to get wet is your fabric and the time it takes to dry your fabric outdoors. But they're definitely cushions that you can leave outside and not worry about them at all. So what you're gonna need for this project is some exterior water resistant um, or waterproof material. You're going to need some pool noodles and I got these from the dollar store. You're going to need a flexible measuring tape, a sewing machine, and we're going to need some UV coordinating thread. So it's 100% polyester UV protected and that's for um, outside so that it doesn't degrade in the sun. And we're also going to be needing a needle, which is specific for using on Sunbrella. Now, now when I looked up the needles that we're going to need for Sunbrella, it was suggested a number 16 or a number 18. These sewing machine needles are uh, slightly shorter, they're thicker, and uh, supposedly the end of the needle is rounded. So what the needle does, it actually goes through and separates those fibers as opposed to a sharp needle that would cut through the fibers. So those are the needles that have been recommended actually by Sunbrella on their website. So I think that this needle and thread is also great for marine fabric and other exterior fabrics. But if you're not sure and you're at the fabric store buying your fabric, the salespeople are very, very helpful and every time I've had a question, they can direct me right to the appropriate needle, the appropriate thread, because the thread not only has to be polyester and UV protected, it has to be the right size for that specific needle. So they can help you out with that. So once you have your thread in your needle, and it's important that you get these right materials because you're going to be putting so much effort into making these cushions you don't want them to fall apart the first season or um, at the end of the season so besides that we're going to need some pins and needles and we're going to need obviously scissors to cut our fabric now all i've done and actually you can make these seats as thick or as thin i wanted a cushion pad like this for the length of my bench. So I decided to cut my noodles in half. Now the fabric I already had because I bought it at a sale, so it was on discount, which is one of the reasons I'm using the two-tone. I didn't have enough to do one solid color, but this coordinates with the bimini that I made. And the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get a measurement for, or you're going to want to know how much fabric you're going to need for your specific project. Now I'm making this long cushion, but of course you can make a much shorter cushion with uh, width as opposed to length. If you want it to go the full back and seat of an outdoor chair, it's up to you but you can use this method no matter what it is that you're going to be um, making. And also this method that I'm gonna show you is also going to avoid having to do a lot of math because it's very difficult 
to know exactly how much fabric you're going to need because we have something that we are stuffing. So essentially we have to not only account for the fabric going across, but we also, in length, we need to account for how much fabric we're going to need in order to allow this gap or to create this channel that our noodle is going to fit into. So the first thing that we're going to do is actually, we're going to get the measurement of your seat and you're going to buy your noodles first. Now, I bought these at the dollar store, but all the noodles come in different sizes and lengths, etc. So this is a good way for you, regardless of the size of the noodle that you end up getting, you'll still be able to use this method to estimate how much fabric you're actually going to need. So the first thing you do is you purchase your noodles and you're going to put your noodles side by side. So the first thing I did is I got the depth of my seat that I was going to be making a cushion for and I got my noodles and I just lined them up side by side until I got the approximate depth of my seat. So for my seat was 20 inches. In order to cover 20 inches, I realized that I'm going to need seven noodles. So I'm just going to keep in mind that I'm going to need seven noodles. And that's approximately, it may be less, it may be more. Now the next thing that I wanted to do was the length of your noodle. And mine's 46 inches. Write that down. And then I want to take the measurement of the height of my noodle. So the height of my noodle is, let's say, one inch. So now my noodle is 46 and it's one inch in thickness. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide that one inch in half equals half an inch. So now I'm going to add 46 plus half an inch, which is half of the thickness of my noodle. So I'm at 46 and a half. I'm also going to need one inch for my seam allowance plus one inch. So now I'm at 47 and a half. And then to finish off the end, I'm going to give myself two inches because what I want to do is I want to do a fold over at the end using Velcro. Plus I also want to have a hem. So I'm going to add two inches to the end. So I want to be able to fold up the bottom layer and fold over the top layer on Velcro in order to create this finished edge. So I know my noodle is one inch, so I'm going to need an extra inch on this end to fold over, but I'm also going to need an extra inch for a hem. So I'm going to need an extra two inches at the end. So my total length is 49 and a half. So now you've got the length of your fabric. And now to figure out the width of your fabric, and I tried doing the math and I almost drove myself crazy. Oh, uh, I forgot to mention, we're going to need Velcro to finish off the end. So what I had to do was I had to measure the circumference of the noodle and my noodle measured six inches all the way around. So I divided that by two. So now I've got the circumference of my noodle, which is six inches, but I only want half of that because I only want half of the measurement for the top piece of fabric because there's also a bottom piece of fabric. We're essentially creating a big pillowcase and we're sewing channels through it and slipping the noodles into those channels in place. So the circumference of your noodle divided in half. My circumference was six, I divided it by two. That gave me three inches, which is just enough fabric to cover the noodle on one side. Then I added a quarter of an inch, which gave me one eighth inch on either side of the noodle in order to give me the noodle room. And I did that for every single noodle that I had. 
So here I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I've got my seven noodles off to the side because I think that's approximately how many noodles I'm going to need. And then what I did was I had some scrap, some umbrella material. I took two long strips of it. I put it together and I marked one inch from the side. This is my seam allowance. So one inch for your seam allowance. And then I measured over three and a quarter inches. And I marked it three and a quarter inches. And I marked it again, three and a quarter inches. And I marked it three and a quarter inches all the way along. And I sewed those in between until I got seven channels. Now I could keep marking these channels all the way down the line, providing I'm going to continually be getting the same noodles. This has now become not only my template, but also it will be able to determine how much material you need going forward for any other future projects. And since I'm making four of these cushions, it's going to be helpful to determine exactly how much fabric I need. So this template is not only going to help me determine exactly the width of fabric that I'm going to need, but this is also going to serve as my template to mark the channels on all the cushions that I do make. So then all I did was... So actually I did a test run. So I marked one inch in from the edge and marked it three and a quarter inches. And I did sew my first channel and I just tested it to make sure. I just tested it, making sure that the noodle fits in that channel, no problem. And then I went ahead and created all my other channels at three and a quarter inches wide and sewed them all up. So now I'm just going to do a test run and put all my noodles in the channel. And remember before, I guessed it would be seven because that's what it looked like I would need approximately for the width of the bench seat. And I'll definitely keep this template for any future projects that I want to work on and actually I do have other chairs out back patio chairs that will require some cushions but as opposed to doing it lengthwise I'm going to cut the noodles shorter so that I can do a both back and seat so now at this point that I've inserted all my noodles I'm going to pretend I'm going to pretend that this is the original seat. So now all I have to do is lay the noodles on top of the seat that I want to create the cushion for. And yes, it fits. And this is going to be an approximate fit because of the size of your noodles. So it might be a little, you can't make it 100% custom, but you can get pretty close. So now I've got the exact measurement for my noodles. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark this side. So I've marked this side and I know that this is going to fit my seat. So then I remove the noodles. I'm left with my fabric. This is the last channel, and I'm going to add one inch to the end of this channel, which is where I put my pin, to allow for my seam allowance. So now all I have to do, lay my fabric down flat and measure it. So I'm getting a measurement of 25 inches 25 inches of material 
but once it's all sewn together, my seat cushion is actually only about 19 inches in depth or in width. So 25 inches of fabric for a 19 inch cushion. But that is only because I'm using this size of noodle. So it's not a standard, you can't use that as a measurement going forward because if your noodle size changes, then your calculations will change. So I need 49 and a half inches of length and 25 inches width of fabric. So now I have a top and a bottom. So in order to create the stripe, I just added my beige stripe to the center. I added blue um, fabric on either side. and did about a quarter of an inch to half an inch seam. I folded over the seam and I restitched over it like this just to create a nice secure stitch. Now, I didn't have to do this extra over stitch but because it's a seat and you're sitting on it with the extra pressure I thought it was a good idea and I did it in the navy blue thread just to add a little bit more detail. And actually when I did create the straight panel, I made it slightly larger. And then I took my colored panel, I put it on top, I flattened it out, and then I just trimmed off the edges to match the panel underneath because I wanted to be a little bit over as opposed to under when I was sewing these panels together. So now that I've got my two pieces cut out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each panel and I'm going to create a hem of one inch. Now so I've got my one inch hem and I'm going to put it to the longest stitch. So use the longest stitch that you can on your machine and then you want to use your tension until you get a nice even stitch on both sides without it pulling through and I just use a piece of painters tape because it just visually makes it easier for me to sew so you can see the length of the stitch here and the length of the stitch there so the tension is perfect but I did practice on a scrap piece of fabric to make sure the tension was perfect before starting. So let's continue making our hem. So now I've given myself a hem, a one inch hem on both sides. I'm gonna put my two pieces together so that I can explain the Velcro. Now I've got good sides out and the wrong sides in. So the first thing I want to do is I want to measure my Velcro and I want to leave about two inches on either end. So I'm just going to start my Velcro about two inches in. So I'm just going to eyeball it and I'm going to cut it to size and I'm leaving two inches on either side. Now this is the good side of my fabric and I actually want the Velcro to go on the inside or the wrong side of my top fabric. So I just take the middle point that's the midpoint of my fabric. Just fold your Velcro in half. And I'm just going to secure it. So 
So now I've got the Velcro secure to the underside of the top piece, but the, I actually want the top piece to fold over the bottom piece. So that means that I need to fold over the bottom piece. and add my Velcro there so that when I finish off the seat, the top piece is overlapping the bottom piece. And this is also good in case there's rain, etc., to have that overlap on top. So I want my Velcro for the bottom to be attached to the good side, whereas the Velcro for the top it's going to be attached to the wrong side. So you can see when I fold this over, I can overlap and create that fold. So if I was to pull these apart, you can see the noodles on the inside. Here's the bottom part, which I fold up. And then the top section I can fold over. And it's going to give us this sort of a finished edge. Line the Velcro up right along that one inch seam that I did. And this fabric is quite thick, which is why I only folded it over once for the seam. So there you go. I've secured my Velcro on both sides. I actually go through the trouble of back stitching both sides because I'm going to come back and now I'm going to do the other side of the Velcro and it's just much easier finishing off each side starting from the top and going down because I can keep all my bulky fabric outside of the machine. So now that I've got my Velcro in place, I wanna take this corner and I'm gonna fold it over an inch. And this is where my seam allowance is going to go, but this one inch is just going to allow this to finish off this is going to be a flap that's going to go over. So we just want to finish it off neatly. So for the bottom piece, remember we attach the Velcro onto the good side. So you want to make sure that when you fold, you're folding it in where the hem is. You're not folding it where the Velcro is. The Velcro. So now we've got our corners, we've got our Velcro, we want to put our pieces of fabric, we want the good sides together. So if you've done your Velcro properly and you have the good sides together, then your top fabric should look like this and your bottom fabric should look like this. So once you put your good sides together, to match the corners up the best we can then we're going to pin it and we're going to sew our one inch seam allowance and what I do is I'll sew one side my one inch seam allowance I'll put it back on the table I'll stretch it out then I'll pin the other side and I'll do the other side. And after I've done both sides, then I'll do my one inch seam allowance at the bottom. So now, so now I'm going to sew my one inch seam allowance on both sides, but I'm going to stop about two inches before the end of my finished fabric. So now I've done my one inch seam allowance on one side. You want to make sure that your fabric is completely flat. And this little extra step just makes sure that the fabric is really flat because this is going to, it'll make it a lot easier once you're sewing these channels. So now I've sewn down one side, down the other, my cloth 
my pieces are perfectly flat. Now I'm going to sew the bottom one inch seam allowance. And now we're going to take our bag and we're going to turn it inside out. So you're going to really want to work on those seams and really press them out. And I find it just easy to, the easiest is to take your hand, run it along the seam. You can even take the edge of your scissors because this fabric does bend and fold. And if you do it now, just to kind of get that crease, it makes it easier with the good sides out. And now this is where our ladder. So now you can see I can take my template and I can put it right across. Now remember this is finished. So we need to leave that one inch gap that we've got at the end. And we just, I line it up from side to side. And I need two different colors here. And then I bring it down, line it up. And I make my marks. And then with my ruler, I can just create those lines, match them up. And I do that all the way along. All the way along and marked my stripes. And then I'm gonna start sewing from the finished edge or from the edge that's sewn. And I'm gonna sew all the way down to the bottom. And I'm, and I'm gonna stop about two inches from the finished edge. So now I have everything pinned and I actually pinned in between the channels so that I can sew down the channel and I don't have to worry about the pins until the end. But this is the important part to make sure that your fabric stays perfectly flat. It'll make it a lot easier to sew those channels all the way down. And like I said, I'm going to start sewing from the part that's sewn together. And I'm going to sew all the way down and I'm going to stop about two inches from the ends. So now I've got my cushion and this is probably the most difficult part of the project is sewing those channels while keeping your fabric nice and flat and making sure those channels are perfectly even so that our noodles will fit into it. And what I do is I'm going to start from the end that's already sewn. And I'm going to start from the inside working out and down. And the other trick is not to really push or pull. You kind of want to let the machine do the work and just take your time. I find that the faster you go, the easier it is to make a mistake. So I'm just going to take my time and make sure the lines are as straight as I can possibly make them. my time and there is a little puckering as I go along but not much but by allowing the machine to actually do the work I find it keeps the line much straighter so I'm going to come all the way to the end and I'm just going to stop about two inches from the finished edge the first line you can see how it's puckering a bit but these pins are keeping everything in place I'm just really guiding it through the machine and I'm allowing the machine to do the work. So now I have half of the channels done. Now I'm going to work on the other half. And this half is a little bit more difficult because I want to continue sewing from the finished edge out. So in this case, I'm gonna to have to pull out my pins. So I've just removed the pins from where I've already sewn the channel. 
because I'm going to have to roll this up. Be careful with those pins under the table. So I've got this all nicely rolled up inside the machine so that I can just feed it through. But the main thing is to keep the fabric nice and flat. That's it, last one. Now I'm going to remove the pins and we're going to insert our noodle. That's really good. Okay, now our noodles. And if we did everything the way that we are supposed to, we will have no problem inserting the noodles. So let's start with the end. You might have to give it a little squeeze. It's easier to do it on a flat table. The first one always seems to be the hardest. But just keep working it and pushing it. There we go. Okay, I'm happy with that. We got the first one in. So the second one was a little easier to go in. I think the first one's always, or the end one is a little bit more difficult because you've got that extra material from the seam allowance in there that sometimes takes up a little bit of the room. And I just squeeze it and give it little pushes and it seems to go all the way down to the bottom perfectly. So the last one is definitely tight, but I got it through. So here we have our cushion Ta -da! and we pushed all the noodles down to the bottom and they will conform once you sit on this. We've got all our noodles in and for these side panels they are tighter because of the seam allowance inside so even give yourself a little an extra eighth of an inch on the ends in order to accommodate for that extra fabric or you can trim back your seam allowances and see if that fits but just keeping in mind the two end noodles are like a very tight fit. Our seat and here's our end. So all we want to do is take those two ends. We're going to fold up the bottom like this. It will conform to the shape of the noodles. So you can just fold that over. We can probably see why we needed that extra inch on the bottom. So there we go, we fold them together and then we can just fold it over. And you can see, this is the bottom. And you can just fold it over so you can see it finishes off that edge nicely. So that's our cushions and I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. I think it actually looks really nice with the stripe in the middle and I love the waves of the cushion. It's very practical, especially for the pontoon, because if this falls in the water, it will float. And it's almost waterproof. If not for the fabric, the interior will not get wet. So you can leave it outside, no problem. If it does get dirty, you've got the Velcro end, you can remove the noodles and launder the cushions. Or if you have to replace the noodles, you can do that as well. And you can create all kinds of cool designs with different pattern fabric. And you can conform this to any chair because the noodles just allow you to curve it however you want. So a tall back, just a seat, or a full back and seat, you can do that as well. If you enjoyed this tutorial, I hope you give me a like. If you try this and you like it, I hope you share it. 
And if you'd like to see more content, I hope you subscribe. Until next time, bon voyage!